Hi, my name's Josie. I'm lecturer in the horticulture department and I'd like to talk you through the horticulture courses that we offer for you all. I've been a lecturer here at Malton College since 2010 and at present I manage level one and level two study programmes. So that involves close liaison with my students to make sure that they're successful and that they're also looked after in all aspects such as pastoral care and any other issues that may arise. I'm particularly passionate about organic crop production, sustainability and both indoor and outdoor plants. I would hope that I would be able to share this passion with you and in turn develop your interest and passion in these subjects too. So why would you choose to work in horticulture? Horticulture is a huge, huge area. The industry has so many different areas that you could actually go to. The opportunities are vast. Whatever your skills are, whether they be maths, design and technology, you might be engineering minded, or you might actually like just to work um, doing research and looking at history or you might be hands-on with building and creating things with your hands and as well have a love of the outdoors and watching things grow. Horticulture can offer you anything in these areas. The world is growing by the moment in population and we're always looking at innovative ways of growing food, um, making lovely areas for us to relax in and have a therapeutic effect as well. So the opportunity to develop sustainability, organic crop production, hydroponics, which is growing in water, which is ever growing by the moment, um, as well as leisure activities, they're there for you. So you can actually choose where you'd like to focus your skills and what you'd like to learn about more. There is so many opportunities for you to take, whether you choose to do um, research and then study and go further, whether you choose to study and take your studies further or go into an apprenticeship after you've done a course so that you can learn new skills. So many opportunities. You could decide that you'd like to be a head gardener working at a prestigious house somewhere. Lots of prestigious houses um, open up their doors so that the public can go and have walks around, look at the history of the houses and look at the ecology. Again, you could go on to a, an ecologist role. So that's all about your surroundings and looking at the balance of nature and keeping the beneficial insects there and keeping that lovely balance with nature. You might decide that you want to manage a landscape. Landscaping might be hard landscaping, things like your uh, patios, um, hard areas, um, gazebos, arbors, walls. You might decide that you want to be a soft landscape manager and a soft landscape manager would be responsible for things like your plants, the colour coordination, um, whether they're evergreen, whether um, it's a minimal modern approach or a country garden um, cottage look. You may want to go into plant production. So plant production would be something like um, working in a nursery where you would be de developing new types of plants. Um, developing new strains that are resistant to pest and disease or growing bedding plants for the summer and winter seasons. If you're scientifically minded you might want to actually look at the biology of plants so you might be interested in developing those plants further. There is a lot of historical research that goes on and this is for many reasons. It could be for restoring former gardens to their full glory, or to look at how plants have developed over the years. Occupational therapy is a lovely 
opportunity where you help others develop their confidence, um, communication, or their mobility even in walking around. It could be working with older people, or it could be working with young people that have need those particular skills and support. You may be very creatively minded and garden design would suit you absolutely to a T there. With garden design, you can choose how you would like to see gardens and landscapes designed. Or you might decide that you'd like to be a teacher. We do need plenty more horticulturists in the world. So teaching is a great vocation to start off and share that passion with other people. So why study at Moulton College? Why study horticulture at Moulton College? We have a wide variety of trees, shrubs and many plant specimens. Our greenhouses are well equipped as is our modern laboratory and we have student gardens specifically for our students to develop so they can learn the whole process from looking at the soil to preparing it to planting in it and then looking after the plants. We work as a team also within the landscape department to develop transferable skills and that means that we work closely with the countryside department, the floristry department, arboriculture and agriculture. With the countryside department, obviously we're looking at the ecological side. So we're looking at beneficial pests and diseases. We're looking at maintaining and sustaining our countryside. With floristry, we'd obviously be looking at how to grow these plants that are now used by the florists. Increasingly, florists are not looking at buying plants that are coming in from Holland or other countries, um, for example, roses from Kenya. But rose, um, florists are looking at plants that we have grown ourselves. So that is a great opportunity as well. Arboriculture, obviously, there's the link with the trees and shrubs there, and also with agriculture, and that's with food growing. Now, agriculture might seem a bit removed from horticulture, but let's look at developing wild meadows and look at developing wild verges to increase the beneficial insects there. And looking at organic growing. So very important that actually we stop using so much of these chemicals and look at more sustainable ways to grow and we have experienced staff here to support you in your chosen specialist field to maximize your success so if you're looking at developing a particular area we can help you and support you with leading you um, in the right direction for that so we have level one land-based studies it's a one-year course it's a diploma and it is then a natural progression to move on to level two diploma in horticulture. Again, it's a one year course. And from there, you can choose whether to go into industry or further your skills with a level three diploma or extended diploma in horticulture. And that's a two year course. If you undertake the level three extended diploma in horticulture, you can then go off to university and actually take your studies further. At the end of the level three course courses, you can then go on to an apprenticeship or straight into work as well as the university option. So what do you need to come into college to study horticulture? So to study your level one diploma, you would need four GCSEs at grade one to two. Level two horticulture, you would need four GCSEs at grade two to three. And level three horticulture, you would need four to five GCSEs at grade four to nine. Progression from level one is to level two and level two is to level three. 
but depending obviously on what qualifications you have when you come into college, you can go into any one of those three, depending on your GCSE grades. So what will you learn here at college? So you've got your main qualification. Alongside your main qualification, you will be studying English and maths if you have not passed your English and maths qualification. You will also be studying employability skills. And these are skills that will help you and help to develop your confidence and communication once you go into the workplace. You will also have a work placement once you're at college as part of your main qualification. And all learners are required to undertake the work placement course. The enhancement means that you'll be able to develop and study more in depth as the units progress and as the levels progress and that you will be stretched and challenged to achieve your best. So each level of study basically goes further in depth into the st subject studied the year before and more modules are incorporated as the level progress. You don't need any prior experience or knowledge in horticulture for whatever level you join as Comprehensive delivery is given of all the students at all levels. You won't need any prior experience or knowledge in horticulture for whatever level you join. Each level will give you comprehensive delivery of all the subjects that you need. If you don't have English or Maths at grade 4 or above, you will be required to study English and Maths as part of your timetabled subjects. So what you'll learn, level one, a basic overview of all horticulture practices. This is hard landscaping, so that's getting your levels correct and laying concrete. Soft landscaping, so that's getting to know your plants and the soil. And development of your employability and social communication skills. The social and communication skills is really very important because as you grow in confidence, this will open up so many more opportunities for you within the workplace. Level two, more specialised subject leading on from level one, including machinery. So you'll be looking at how to operate a strimmer, a hedge cutter and maintaining them. Um, as well as plant and soil science. So we're going in a little bit deeper there. You will be continuing with your development of employability and social communication skills at this level two. Level three, again going in further in depth into the modules that you'll be studying. And we'll be looking at modules that can lead to specialist areas within the industry. So this at level three is where you'll be studying garden design, machinery. So you'll be looking more at maybe possibly tractor driving. You'll be looking at estate skills, how to manage an estate. This could be fencing, natural um, boundaries. It could be um, hedge laying, possibly. It could be lots of different um, skills within maintaining an estate. Propagation, now propagation is creating new plants and that's either by seed or cuttings. And you'll be looking at things like grafting as well. We will be studying exterior and interior plant displays. So it's not all about being outside. There is a huge calling at the moment for exterior plant displays. And you can find these in shopping centres and hotels and various areas where plants are really showcased in, in, in an indoor setting. And also we'll be looking at growing crops organically and sustainably. So work placement, level one, two and three will be required to take a work placement throughout their period of study. Now, 
we recommend that you take a weekly work placement and that will give you a, a varied range of seasonal tasks throughout the year. It, it will prepare you for the world of work in a safe and supported environment. You can complete your work experience at more than one location and if it's paid then that's perfectly okay as well. You are encouraged to find your own work placement and this is because obviously you would want to work somewhere in your local area so that you can travel there independently and also we would like you to research opportunities in your area and go through the process of applying for that position. However, we are there to support you every step of the way in finding a work placement. Pre previous work placements have included nursery stock production. So we've had students go and work in a nursery that are producing bedding plants for the summer and winter. We've had students that have gone off and they've done their work experience as groundsmen within very esteemed houses, for example, Bowton House. Garden centres offer work experience and lots of our students have worked there, whether it's been in customer service or in the plant area. And we've had students decide that they'd like to undertake work experience within a hard landscaping company. So that's laying block paving, laying patios, um, and all associated tasks in that area. So what will you need to come to college? So you must all have steel toe cap boots, work trousers, work gloves, and a waterproof jacket because unfortunately the weather is not always sunny and shiny. You will also need a pen and paper, quite often forgotten. So always remember a pen and paper, a folder to keep your work in, a study bag for keeping your PPE in. We do like to go on trips and visits that are very relevant to your course and they do add a lot of enrichment and these are generally funded by the college. If you are concerned about the costs of coming to college, please speak to our student services team about the financial support and bursaries available. So your typical timetable would be three days a week at college, and two study days. So although it's a full-time course, you are required in college three days per week. We encourage you that you complete a day of work experience on one of the study days, and the other day is spent studying, doing any of your coursework, further research. Practical lessons make up half of your time tabled weekly lessons and the other half of your weekly lessons are in the classroom developing your knowledge evidence. Our courses are a combination of practical and academic skills. These skills will prepare you for your next step into the horticulture industry. If you have any questions, we're very happy to answer them and if you'd just like to chat, again, we're very happy and um, are online to answer your questions and chat in general. Thank you very much for listening.